from the earth. Did you hear that, Schroeder? Did you hear that? That was the message we both needed. That these dead shall not have died in vain. They wonder sometimes, those who gave that last full measure of devotion, if the people who inherited this country are worth the sacrifice. Well, I've seen both now. I've seen the country and the people. They're worthy of each other. You've made me understand, too. You have made me proud. Proud and humble. I'm glad. Look after Jimmy, will you? I'll see you in Washington. Of course. And I want to thank... Jimmy, that's the tomb of the unknown soldier. The guard always there? Always. And over there lie other heroes, the unknown of the war between the states and other wars. Is this where we're supposed to meet him? I thought we might. He said he'd see us again. Come to think of it, he didn't say we'd see him. Nice. I wonder what he does. I don't know, Jimmy. But whatever it is, I have a feeling his job is done. And to think we never even knew his name. His name? Like the words of President Harding when he dedicated this spot, the name of him whose body lies here took flight with his imperishable soul. We know only that his death marks him with the everlasting glory of an American who died in this country. How do you feel, Wiley? I'm all right. Get me out of here. If you lie still or I'll hang one on you. But you guys are going home. We won't leave without you. Excuse me. Hello, Lieutenant. I hear the sergeant stop the flak. Yeah. Last mission, too. I don't believe he's badly hurt. I am, too. I need a nurse. Mm-hmm. Take good care of him, will you, nurse? Have you heard what the man said? Dog. She did this on purpose. All right, soldier. I'll look after him. And if he doesn't behave, where will I ship the body? Somewhere in Minnesota. Minnesota? North Center. But there's no big hurry now. That's up to you. Oh, listen, the time to wonderful. She's that. Where is she now? I don't know. We saw her track. The crew split up. I think I know your trouble, son. I felt the same way after the last war. You're still restless. You miss your buddies. Yeah, I guess I do. What a gang. That was the skipper, Captain Ed Ross. 
the hottest darn pilot in the whole Air Force. Bing Miller, co-pilot. Bill Coble, bombardier. He could drop those eggs in your hat from 30,000 feet. And Red, what a guy. Who's Red? He was the tail gunner. The only one I ever heard of who shot down two planes with one bullet. Two? <laughs> How in the world did he do that? You'd never believe me if I told you. Boy, I'd like to see that gang again. That would be the best thing for you. Things in Detroit. Reds in New England. The skipper's out west. They're scattered all over them. Well, so what? You just got through traveling all over the world. Why not taper off on a trip around your own country? I couldn't afford it. And the old jalopy would never make it. I think I know a way you could afford it. Be wonderful fun and relaxation for you. How? Oh. Come on, son, I'll show you. Detroit, you say, is the first place? Detroit, yeah. Well, that means you'll go by way of the Twin Cities and Chicago. Chicago bus now loading. Points east and south. Chicago, all aboard. Now take your time, relax, and enjoy the trip. Come home when you get darn good and ready. Maybe that'll be sooner than you think. After all this kiting around in the air, I don't know if I'm going to like bus travel so much. Oh, you'll like it all right, won't he, driver? A lot of people do. I'll put your bag away, sir. Thanks. People are traveling now who never traveled before the war. But going to see their boys in camp got them start going places by bus. Now they found how easy it is. All aboard, sir. Well, so long, Dad. So long, son. Have a good time, thanks. Little Thanks. You haven't been traveling much by bus lately, I take it. No, ma'am. I come from Seattle. Seattle, Washington? By bus? It hasn't seemed far. I've been comfortable. And there's so much to see along the way. Look. Indians gathering wild rice. They knock the rice off stalks into the boat. I guess they've been doing it that way for hundreds of years. I like things like that, to see different sights in different parts of the country. Ever visit Mackinac Island up here at the end of Michigan? No. It's not too far from here. You take a boat over. It's the place that's spelled Mackinac and pronounced Mackinac. Why is that? I've wondered about that. Next time I go over there, I'm going to find out. The old fort still stands there since way before the Revolution. It used to be called the stronghold of the Straits. John Jacob Astor had one of his fur trading posts there. You can still see some of his old buildings. There are no automobiles allowed on the island, but you can go any place by horse and buggy. By highway is still the best way to see the country, but fortunately both the roads and the carriers have been made a lot faster and smoother since then. Or if you like to just sit on a porch and relax, there's the longest porch in the world. I've got a notion to stop over on my way back. How far are you going? I'm not sure yet. I'm going to look up some of my old bomber crew. I don't know how many I'll get to. Bing's in Detroit. He was our co-pilot. He's an engineer in one of the automobile factories there. Thousands of cars every day. Gosh, Bing, some plant you've got here. That's one of the General Motors plants. You know, they make so many of those Greyhound buses. Compared to this modern industrial city, You'll find just at the edge of Detroit, a reconstructed village of a hundred years Greenfield. Oh, yeah. Henry Ford built it, didn't he? Yes. To honor Thomas A. Edison. He's moved in some of the real homes and business places of some of America's greatest names. Places like the Stephen Foster House, the McGuffey Log Cabin, the man who wrote the McGuffey Readers, the old Clinton Inn, first overnight stop of the stagecoach out of Detroit a hundred years ago, like the Greyhound Post Houses of today. The Menlo Park is there. Edison's old laboratory in which he invented the electric light. The courthouse in which Lincoln practiced law for eight years. I feel as if I was walking backwards through history. <laughs> What's that? That's Gog and Magog. Who? The figures over the doorway of the old jewelry shop. Gog and Magog, striking the hour. Two giants Caesar is supposed to have captured and chained to the gates of London. 
Well, I'll be done. Car for Cincinnati, Lexington, Chattanooga, Birmingham, and Point South. Now loading at gate four. So long, Keith. I wish I was going along with you. But give my best to all the gang, huh? Sure. So long. So long. Say, you don't happen to know what became of Connie, do you? Connie? Oh, the nurse. Yeah. No, I don't. Why don't you ask Tony? You'll be meeting him in Cincinnati, won't you? Yeah, I'm going down to Kentucky with him. If you were looking for a horse, he'd know. And you can tell him I said so. <laughs> oh, Tony. I can hear that horse laugh of his yet. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what he said, huh? Same old thing. What do I know about you, nurse? Why are you all in the lather? I just wondered. Cincinnati has quite a waterfront, hasn't it? Yeah, one of the longest, 30 miles. Of course, it was the Ohio River that made the town. There comes the overnight boat from Louisville. Before the roads came, for 100 years or more, the Ohio River was the only highway they had east and west. I never thought of that. Looks like it's still in use. It's the busiest river for its size in America. Just now, it's at flood state, so there's not much moving. This is almighty interesting. Uh, well, you see Kentucky. Why do they call it bluegrass? Under that turf out there for about 1,200 square miles is a layer of peculiar limestone, mostly fish bones. Fish bones? This part used to be under the ocean. That was before my time. Oh. The old fish bones give the grass a lot of phosphorus and calcium. This not only makes the grass blue-green, but it builds light, strong, running legs for horses. That's why we say good horses run anywhere, but they're raised in the bluegrass. Is that why they call this section the horse capital of the United States? Well, it's not only called, it is. Look at that. It's a horse paradise on earth. Luscious pastures, barns like cathedrals, and their own exercise sports. There's a nice looking horse. And that's Whirlaway, having company today. These horses have their own private racetracks where they train. And when they pass on, they own graveyard. A horse cemetery. Who'd have thought it? Just the droves of people who come here from all over the country every year to see it. I know one horse has a guest book with more than two million names in it. You know any human celebrities can top that? I wonder if Connie was one of them. Ah, you and your Connie, come on. That checks off Bing and Stoney. Maybe Red will know. I beg your pardon? <laughs> I must have been thinking out loud. Something Red Corpuscle might know. Red Corpuscle? He was our tail gunner, red-headed. His real name's Corpuscle, so of course everybody calls him Red Corpuscle. Oh. He lives in Revere Mills near Boston. Oh. And is that where you're going? Yes, I'm... What's that? Oh, that's the entrance to the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Haven't you ever been over it? No. Oh, it's wonderful. I tell you? It's a dream highway. 160 miles without a stoplight. Crossroads go either over or under. There's one overhead now. How do they get on it? Just at the end? There are nine or ten side entrances. They call them interchanges. We're coming to one of them now. Oh, a clover leaf. Cars can enter or leave without interrupting the traffic. I can't get over how level it is. Even in rough country. What are we going to do when we hit the real mountains? Oh, you'll see any minute now. We tunnel right through. Right. This is a dream, by the way. My father works for the Highway Commission, and he tells me that there are going to be a lot of these express highways around the country soon. This one follows the old shortcut between the Atlantic and the Ohio River. First an Indian path, and then a peddler's trail. Only instead of winding up and over the mountains, we just tunnel straight through. Miles and miles of them. I wouldn't have missed this for a good deal. And I'm glad I sat beside you. Thank you, kind sir, she said. Now I've got something to tell Red. He's just crazy about tunnels. Oh.
Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. They told me I might find my friend Coppercell up here. Red! Wiley! <laughs> for big sake! Welcome to Revere Mills! I was just coming down to meet you. Shucks, the clock must be late. What the... You know, for a minute I thought you were the mayor. I am the mayor, and don't laugh. What? Go ahead, knock yourself out. All I know is when I came home, they made me the mayor, and I'm trying to give them a good deal. And you will, Red. Uh, I mean, Your Honor. The get-up I found in the closet. I put them on for you for a gag. Come on, I'll show you the municipality. Uh, the what? Okay, then, the town. <laughs> Remember the arguments we used to have? Bill Colville for California, Chick for Florida. And of course, Tex was all for Texas. Don't forget Minnesota. Land of lakes. You and your lakes. A little mini soda water. There's a real pond. Those waves are coming in from 3,000 miles away, over where we were. It's like I kept telling you guys. Everything started here. Remember what I showed you today? We're all part of New England, Plymouth Rock, where our forefathers landed. Faneuil Hall, where the Boston Tea Party was planned, and Boston Harbor, where it was pulled off. Paul Revere's home, the Old North Church, and the very steeple where the signal lanterns were hung. Lexington Village Green, where Paul Revere rode and the farmers gathered and stopped the redcoats at the bridge over Concord River. Where you saw the Minuteman statue. No wonder they called the land the Pilgrim's Pride and were proud of today more than ever. You know what I was homesick for most while I was overseas? That. Boston Common, where the colonists used to pasture their cows, duck their witches, and hang their pirates. And the young men took their girls for a walk. Looks to me like they still do it. Yeah, this is one place a fleet is permanently in. <laughs> Say, speaking of girls, do you know where Connie Albright is now? I believe she's stopping in Williamsburg. Virginia? Yeah. To restore a whole town is no small job. Rockefellers have given millions of dollars to rebuilding hundreds of buildings from cottages to state house on the old foundations. We've seen the Bruton Parish Church, the oldest church in America where services have been held continually. You can sit in George Washington's own pew or Thomas Jefferson's or John Adams. You've seen the governor's palace and formal gardens. This was the center of the social life of Virginia for 70 years, up to the Revolution. Yonder's the old jail, with the pillory alongside. They're putting a fellow and girl in. <laughs> yes, they have a lot of fun with that sometimes, but there was a time they fastened people in there for all day, for minor crimes, like kissing your wife on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't see why that was a crime. Do you, Miss Albright? No, except for some of the whiskers the men wore in those days. I'd say it was a crime any time. <laughs> so where are you going from here? Williamsburg on the next bus. Williamsburg? Yes. I like restored colonials, too. Oh, sure. I hope she's still there. I'm sorry. I won't be here, Miss Lucy. I'm leaving within a day or two for a trip through the Smokies, then on to Jacksonville. minutes for lunch. catch that bus? Oh, I don't know, mister. That's the southbound bus through the Great Smokies. Oh. The other section will be coming along in a few minutes. It might catch up with them somewhere down the line. I'll get my badge, huh? Yes, sir. The second section is loaded with a bunch of high school students today. I think they can squeeze you in. Thanks. Attention, everybody. 
everybody. Jack. Riding through the Great Smokies, remember you're looking at some of the oldest mountains in the world. Older than the Alps or the Andes or even our own Rockies. There are also more different kinds of trees and plants here than any other spot in the world. There are still great sections of it no white man has ever seen. On the other hand, there are white people living back among those hills who have never been out of them. They talk pure English, but you might have a hard time understanding some of them. It's almost the English of Chaucer's time. They grind their own grain in century-old water mills. They spin their own thread and weave their own cloth. <laughs> 